Story 1. Am I the a-hole for calling the police on my boyfriend's family? Last year I moved in with my boyfriend and his dad. My boyfriend and I were in a long-distance relationship for a few years, and I moved across the country to be with him after I finished graduate school. Due to such a large distance, I opted to sell my car and buy a new one after moving. When I did this, my boyfriend helped me out by loaning me some money to help pay the down payment, but I've since paid him back. Last week, my boyfriend's older sister, who lives in another state, came to visit and stayed in the house with us. This was my first time meeting her, and I thought she was very nice, but I didn't get to know her well. Two days ago, my boyfriend and I were running errands together, and her sister called him to ask when he would be back so she could borrow his car to go hang out with her friends in a town about an hour away. He told her it would be a while, and since then asked if it was okay to borrow my car. My boyfriend asked me, and I told him I was not comfortable with that, and to tell her no. My boyfriend did tell her no. I heard the entire conversation. Well, a few hours later, my boyfriend and I got home, and my car was gone. I was shocked, and my boyfriend was confused. When we went into the house, his dad informed us that he gave my boyfriend's sister the spare key to my car that was in the lockbox because she said she needed to go somewhere. My boyfriend told him that she asked to drive my car and that we had told her no, so he didn't understand why she was allowed to take it, and his dad said that since my boyfriend helped pay for the car, that it was therefore partly his, which meant his sister had the right to drive it as well. I was absolutely livid, and I couldn't believe that anyone would do something like this. My name is only the is the only one on the title, insurance, etc., as I am the sole owner. My boyfriend told his dad to call her and tell her to bring my car back immediately, and she said she would be home soon. Well, after two hours, I called the police and reported my car stolen because I was worried that if it got damaged or something, then I would be forced to pay the repairs even though it wasn't my fault. My boyfriend's dad and sister were ticked about this and they accused me of trying to get them arrested. They are now demanding that I apologize to them and tell the police that it was all an under a misunderstanding, but I really don't want to because I feel that they've tried to take advantage of me. My boyfriend agrees with me, but... He even said he thinks calling the police to report the car stolen may have been too far. Am I the a-hole? Not really. I don't think so. Maybe give it a little bit more time than just the two hours, although that might be cutting it close. It's... She did everything that... She did, I think she did everything she did right. They were making a lot of assumptions and they were being very entitled, the dad and the sister. They, even though he helped pay, the boyfriend helped pay for it, she was the sole owner of this. And they really didn't have the right to take this. They were really taking advantage of this. After calling the police on them, though, she's going to have to live with this. She's not the a-hole, but this is probably going to have some big consequences moving forward. Story 2. I finally told my father's infantilizing friend that I hate him. Years ago, my dad met Harold through mutual friends, and they hit it off. I was 18 and in college when I met him, and we never had a close relationship. However, he always seemed to think of himself as a family friend and was extremely infantilizing and condescending towards me. Every time I saw him, I tried to tell myself it wasn't that bad, only for him to prove me wrong less than a minute later. Harold would disrespect my boundaries, say things like, 
You're not 19. You're a baby. While I was talking to other people and patronize me, my education, or my hobbies whenever he had the chance, he always noticed that annoyed me, to which he playfully asked if I hated him. I always said no, but only for my father's sake. The final straw came the day that Harold interrupted a barbecue to say, I really like you, even though you're an impolite brat. I was 20 years old. I'd been quiet all day working on a paper during the barbecue, but replied patiently and politely whenever anyone addressed me. And even if that hadn't been the case, I knew he didn't have the right to talk to me like that. After that, I started making an effort to avoid any events I knew he'd be attending. Yesterday was my father's girlfriend's birthday. They threw a small lunch party at my dad's apartment. I went there with my fiancé and our six-month-old son. Harold was there. I hadn't seen him in months, but he still talked to me as if I was a dumb child. Never mind that I'm engaged, a mother, and 26 years old. I spent the whole party ignoring his helpful advice about me being too young to get married or be a mom. It helped that most of the other guests seemed to disagree with him. My baby spent most of the afternoon sleeping. There's a bassinet in my old room. He woke up hungry, so I went to breastfeed him and excused myself from the party for a while. I got back to jokes and comments, all from Harold, about how I was probably struggling if my son was managing to leech me away for so long. He went on to interrupt a conversation I was having with another of my dad's friends to question pretty much everything about my parenting. He doesn't even have custody of his daughter, by the way, and to make more comments about my age. I decided I couldn't take it anymore after he asked if I thought about giving my baby up for adoption. I got my son and told my fiancé we were leaving. We said goodbye to everyone except Harold. When we got to the door, Harold came to ask why we were leaving. I tried to make up an excuse, but he kept trying to make us stay. After a small back and forth, he jokingly asked if I hated him. And this time I said, yes, I do. Can we go now? He didn't say anything, and we left. On the way home, my fiancé said he was proud of me. My father called this morning to say the opposite, and we had a small fight, but ultimately decided to drop the subject. I'm sure this isn't over, but if it keeps, on, but if it keeps going, it won't be because of me. This is far from my proudest moment, and a small part of me regrets it, but I'm done with that guy. Finally, standing up for yourself is not a bad thing. You did everything, this person did everything in their power to really put up with this person for the father's sake. It probably might have helped to be a little more honest about things or a little more tactful over the years to say something like, no, I don't hate you, but I find this behavior of yours annoying because blah, 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 blah. If you were just saying this just to get this person out of your way so you could leave, it might have been a little too harsh, but at least you're standing up for yourself. It's kind of, it kind of came to a head there. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 3. My husband is pushing me to agree to make my sister our surrogate using the traditional way. My husband and I have been struggling with infertility. We've tried some options, and right now we're looking into surrogacy. My sister agreed to do it, but my husband said he looked at how much time and money IVF would take and slowly started hinting that we should take the traditional way. I was shocked to even say anything, but he acted like what he said was not even that big of a deal. He explained that it's just a quick way for us to have a baby and spare the money and time to use later. I'm 100% against it. 
That's why I'm backing down and am no longer comfortable with this whole surrogacy route. I can't even imagine my sister's reaction once she hears my husband's suggestion. I'm both devastated over the fact that, one, he'd even entertain having intimacy with my sister just because he wants the easy way, and two, if I ever agree despite feeling uncomfortable, then I will carry this memory of how the baby is conceived. I refused and shut his suggestion down hard. He's now started to guilt me, saying I don't trust him, then saying I'm selfish for choosing to back out while he still wants to be a dad like he expected when he married me, basically blaming me for my infertility issues. I feel so devastated and like my body is useless and has failed me to the point where I could expect any negative comment on it, whether true or not, emotionally and mentally, I just can't express how I feel right now. By the way, my sister is four years younger than me. I'm 34 years old and my husband is 37. Really? He is really trying to gaslight this person. How many people think the husband just wants an excuse to smash the sister? It just seems all signs point to that, and this is just a very easy excuse. And all this talk about guilting her is just trying to get her just to play along with it. It's, ew, creepy. I wouldn't consider surrogacy at this point. I consider... A divorce. Separation, at the least. Story 4. A shrewy bridesmaid meets an immovable force. My mother. Some quick background. My baby brother was born terminally ill, and the long hospital stays and expensive meds kicked in around six months old. To cope with the huge medical bills, Mom worked some odd jobs over the years, including making custom wedding and bridesmaids gowns. My mom had a few die-hard rules. Number one, she did all of your measurements. I heard the lecture of vanity fibbing only results in a poorly fitting dress, more times than I can count. Number two, all final fittings must be completed at least three weeks before the wedding. That way, if Dewey had an emergency hospital stay, she'd have time to arrange for someone to sit with him while she went home to finish a job. He was nonverbal and needed a constant companion. This particular bride wanted all of her bridesmaids in pastel organza dresses. Organza is a gauzy fabric. The base dresses were white, covered with these colors. Unfortunately, the bride had more bridesmaids than pastel shades the fabric came in, meaning one lucky bridesmaid wore tan. The bride refused to start a fight by assigning colors, so it was first come, first serve. When you came for measurements, you got to pick from the remaining colors. One bridesmaid lived three hours away and flat out refused to come to town to be measured. She insisted that telling us she was a size 8 and that was good enough. Bridal sizes are very different and didn't cleanly convert, so that meant nothing. Mom finally reached the compromise that a local seamstress could measure her and send in the measurements. One month before this wedding, Dewey was admitted into the ICU to be placed on a ventilator. Mom now had to find enough coverage to get eight dresses finished off in the next two or so weeks. She pulled it off thanks to some amazing friends, but it was tight. Dad was busy working overtime to pay the bills and dealing with us two other kids. Well, this shrewy bridesmaid, BB from now on, still refused to have a final fitting more than two days before the wedding. She didn't want to waste a trip just because my mom was a horrible seamstress who didn't understand proper sizing. I was cleaning up seed pearls during the lovely conversation. My mom begged a friend to sit with Dewey for an entire day so she could do the fitting and adjustment all at once. Oh, awful. Just completely awful. No. I'm sure this person doesn't know all the stuff this mother has to go through with the son. Maybe it's not 
her business. But still, I don't think any of these rules that uh, the mom is laying out are unreasonable and, you know, for the fitting and everything. They're her rules, and everybody else seemed to agree to it. It's just this one person that's giving him trouble. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.